Hi, in this video I will demonstrate how you can discover what people are interested in. This is a very important topic for content creators and researchers and anyone who is writing texts because you want to make sure that whatever it is that you're creating will reach as many people as possible. And the best way to do that is to write in the way that uses the language that people who are interested in your content would also use when they search for it. And you have an amazing tool available for that, Google search suggestions. So when you type something in, it shows you what else people are searching for with this search term, but it only provides 10 results. So in this video, I will demonstrate how you can extract uh, around 200 search suggestions for any search query, visualize it as a graph using the Infranodus text network visualization tool, identify the main ideas inside. So for instance, in this case, we see that when somebody searches for AI, they also search for free chats, they also search for image generators here, right? So we can quickly see the patterns and the context of any search query. And we can understand very quickly what language we should be using when we are creating content. It also gives us a much better understanding of the context around any search query and also the main topics around it so that we can understand how we can better target the people who are interested in our content. A little bit about myself, I'm Dimitri, I'm the creator of this tool in Frenodus. I've been working on text visualization, text analysis and AI for the last 10 years and I just like to share various use cases uh, using this tool. So I hope you find it interesting and also please subscribe to this channel so that this video can get recommended to other people interested in the same content. So let's get into it. I will show you step by step how you can uh, build the same graph for any search term. So first you will need to open Infranodus and then you go to the study a market and SEO analysis tab. And then what you want to do is to study informational demand. And what you want to choose now is to find what are the search queries related to the one that you will be using. So I'll type in AI here and then I click visualize. And what basically happens is that Infranodus extracts around 200 suggestions from Google for this search query. So you know how when you type in AI, it's going to show you what else people are searching for. So here it only shows 10, but if you actually perform the search, it also shows much more stuff at the bottom of the page sometimes, right? So it extracts all this stuff and visualizes a graph with them. And then every word is a node in this graph and every co-occurrence of those words, so if they're used in the same context, uh, they will be connected. And the words that tend to be used in the same context a lot, they will form a cluster and it will be shown on the graph um, as, a, as a community of nodes and it will also have the same color. So for example, here I made a search on AI, it extracted 200 related search queries. So what else people search for when they search for AI? And it shows me that, for example, one of the most prominent search patterns in relation to AI is image generator. So I understand that this is probably the topic that people are interested in most when they search for AI. They want to generate images. They want to also generate logos. So that allows me to very quickly understand uh, what are the search patterns that exist out there in relation to the subject. And for instance, if I'm creating content about AI or if I'm making research about AI and I want to publish it, perhaps if I want to appeal to general public, I would be focusing on image generation and generating logos. And also here I can see website creation. So once I identify those patterns, I can actually select those nodes and save them into my notes. So I just select them here on the graph and click this button here. Uh, if you don't see it, you have to switch to advanced mode at the top. Uh, so I'll save some of the keyword ideas here. Generated logos, also save this, and then also image generator. And what's really great here is that not only I understand the context, I also understand the specific words that people use. So for example, if I'm creating content on that subject, I want to make sure I will be using those words like generator, generated, creator, website, and so on. So here I identify some of the main patterns in relation to AI. I also see here that there is intelligence chat. So if I click here, I can actually see in which context it's used. And here it shows me AI, artificial intelligence chat. So I understand, okay, this is something that people also use a lot. They want to find chats that have artificial intelligence. So they actually use this search query to find something related to AI. So I'm also going to choose that. So I understand now that people want to create websites, they want to generate logos, 
they want to generate images and they want to have uh, uh, chats with artificial intelligence. And perhaps if I want to create some content on the subject, I want to target those terms because I know that people are already searching for them. Another really powerful feature here is that not only I can see what people are searching for, but I also can see how many searches are made. So here I have a filter and it actually shows me that um, some of the searches, they have more than 10,000 searches per month. So if I select them, I'll see that actually uh, all this image stuff or uh, ca character generation search terms, they're actually used quite a lot. So that's a good sign for me because uh, I understand that actually they're in high demand, but also that means that there is high competition for them. So perhaps I would need to import more search queries or, or more search queries related to the ones I'm searching for in order to see some that are less popular so I can target uh, a less crowded space if I'm creating content. And I can do that here easily by clicking add more search queries and for example, adding something on, let's say, uh, AI image generator. Now I'm going to add this into this graph. So it will add this information here. And now I see that, okay, once I add this, there's much more stuff about free uh, things. So I understand that people also search for the free stuff. If I click here, I see that, okay, they're searching for free things. Uh, perhaps if I just want to create content, I could create a blog post on free AI image generators. And if I have a product, I, I could propose it inside, but perhaps it's also not an audience that I would be interested in if I want to sell something. So in this case, I would select this node free and I would hide it from the graph. You select it like, like this by clicking on the graph and then hiding it. So that's the advantage of using the graph because it's very hard to do the same with any tools that do similar kind of analysis, but that just offer you spreadsheets because you have to do all this sorting and filtering and it's quite difficult to use them here. You are seeing the patterns directly because human eyes are very well suited for detecting patterns. And you can also remove the stuff you're not interested in and then the tool will automatically recalculate the importance of the most prominent patterns and it will highlight them on the graph. So the concepts uh, or the keywords that are more relevant or more important, they'll, they'll be bigger so you can see them directly. So uh, you don't need to look at the numbers, you see already uh, the most prominent keyword combinations here. So for example, now what comes up is online chats, right? So here I can see that this is another really important uh, search query that people use. So I can also save this online chat with AI, chat artificial intelligence, website creation, logo generators. Okay, great. So there I saved some ideas and now I can move on and add more stuff. So I will add more search queries. And here, another advantage is that you don't only have to use Google search suggestions, but you can also type in AI, and then now you can ask AdWords suggestions. And this is a slightly different source of information because AdWords, they have a much wider reach because if Google suggestions shows you what else people are searching for when they search for AI, the most typical related searches, AdWords, they're a bit more... Uh, spread out, right? So they show you maybe things that you should target when you place ads. So it's already uh, using the knowledge that Google has about search patterns of people and kind of uses synonyms and similar stuff, but maybe that don't have a direct relationship to the original search term, but that still targets uh, the stuff that they would be interested in. So here, once again, we see that image generator comes up quite a lot. And for example, there's also a big cluster here on intelligence, artificial intelligence. So people also use search term artificial intelligence. In fact, in this case, I would even be interested to use this further. So I select those nodes and I try to make import from Google suggestions for artificial intelligence because maybe there's like a different collection of ideas. I, I select and hide the concept um, that uh, I'm not interested in, AI, because I know it's in every search query. And I already know that a lot of stuff are on image generators, so I will hide that as well. Uh, and maybe also free and online, I can get rid of because I already have this information. And so I have, again, those patterns of keywords that are used in related search queries appearing. So I see, for example, that people search for ChatGPT, but when they search for ChatGPT, if I select on it, 
it shows me what else people are searching for. So I see that they're searching for ChatGPT chatbots and I see how many searches a month are made. Here, not so many. So perhaps uh, if I'm making content, I could do something on ChatGPT AI chatbot, for instance, here. I can also save it into my notes. And now I have much more stuff available here. If I want to get a high level idea of the main topics in those search terms, I can just get all the notes back into the graph and then I can click this button here that will show the topic names for the main clusters. And here, for example, I see that there's something about AI in general. So like artificial intelligence and image generation are the two main topics. They actually have the highest prominence here, 70% and AI here, 26% but also some more technical stuff like uh, models. So this is kind of like more technical stuff on LLMs, uh, using the terms that maybe people who know a bit more about AI use and various workflow steps. And then let's see more if there's something else. So for example, there's something from science, diffusion, stability, and so on. So here you actually can already start digging in a little, a little bit deeper and seeing what are the clusters where you would have higher chances of reaching the audience. Because if you target image generation, it looks like a really crowded space. A lot of people are searching for it. Probably there's already quite a lot of supply for this topic. So what you want to do is to focus on the smaller ones like here. And in this case, you can actually select this topic and click this I button here. So it means it's just going to filter this topic only and show you only the terms that relate to this. So for example, here, learning LLM and let's see what's some LLM machine learning. So this is also something that people are searching for uh, and this is coming from AdWords. So it's showing us that there is a big demand for technical knowledge about how LLMs work. So if we're creating content on the subject, perhaps we could take that into account and use it in our content strategy. So I'm going to add this and then also there's something on healthcare, machine learning in healthcare. So that's also a big topic. Another idea that I can use for my content strategy, and this is much more specific. And you see the number of searches is from 1000 to 10,000. So that's great because uh, it's not as competitive as the other stuff. And now I'm starting to find the niches uh, that are maybe underserved because uh, everyone will be focusing on the most search for keywords. And here we're finding the clusters that are a little bit uh, more nuanced somehow. And then I can get these nodes back to the graph. So either by clicking reset filters or just clicking here and getting them back into the graph and then performing a similar analysis. One thing that I always recommend is to erase the actual search terms that you are doing the search for. So in this case, AI, artificial intelligence, I hide, then it recalculates everything. And then I have a better understanding of the context around uh, the search query. So there's something on image generation, this I already know, chat dynamics, web, web creation, and machine learning. There are also smaller clusters that I can explore later, but in this case, I actually want to focus on web creation. So for example, website creation, this also seems to be quite a big topic, right? So if I click on website, I see with which other terms it's used. Uh, website creation, AI website creation. So that's interesting for me because Maybe I want to also write about various tools that allow users to use AI to create websites. So that would be another aspect of my strategy, something to create websites with AI. Now that I studied this whole uh, picture of what people are searching for, I have a full list here. I have a much better understanding of what people are interested in when they search for AI. And of course, this was just made in about 10 minutes. So I could add more and more search queries and get some more precise results or steer the research in a specific direction I'm interested in. For instance, if I choose website creation, AI website creation, I could type this in here, AI website creation, and just import more search queries related search queries to AI website creation. Again, I have to remove the stuff that I already know. So free image generator, artificial intelligence, I hide from the graph. And then I see, okay, so there's something about Wix builder, Wix AI website builder review. So people are looking a lot uh, to find out how good is the Wix AI website builder. Probably they not, don't trust it. That could be an opportunity. For example, I could make an article on uh, which AI website builders are better, or I could even create a product that would also distinguish itself by saying that actually the AI it uses is much better 
than the ones used by the popular products like Wix, for instance, right? But then I can also dig a little bit deeper and see, for example, here Google is a big, big search term, chatbot. So Google chatbot, this was in relation to AI. Uh, so people are also searching for Google chatbots. That maybe is not so interesting to me, but I could also make an article comparing different kinds of chatbots. Um, and actually, once I start removing those terms from the surface, I will get to the deeper stuff. So here you actually have a button that automatically does it for you, so you don't have to select and remove them manually. It just takes the most influential keywords from this here, and then it hides them from the graph and recalculates everything. So here, this kind of procedure allows me to slice off the top layers of content in order to get to the deeper stuff. And once I do that a few times, I will start seeing patterns that were not visible before. Uh, so, for example, here I have a website builder, but interestingly, there's open builder. So, what is it? Open source. So, people are looking for open source website builders. This is great because uh, I will actually save this here open source website builder. So, we don't have website because we just removed this node, so I have to add it manually. So I understand that, okay, this is the interest of people, open source AI website builder, something they could host on their own computer, maybe tweak a little bit to fit uh, more their interests and use it in their production workflows. Also, we see that Reddit comes up quite a lot. So people go to Reddit to find out uh, what are the best tools, what are the best image generators, what are the best website builders and so on. So, I should also add Reddit into the list of my ideas because it means when I publish this content, I probably want to advertise it on Reddit, post um, into some communities there, so people who are looking for the comparisons can actually find my article. So that would be another insight, but more in the direction of how, how I would actually promote it. So this is the workflow that I would use to explore the context around any search query. You can use it for any topic. As you can see, it's very powerful and you can do it in a few iterations. And after a few minutes, you get a really good understanding of what people are searching for in relation to any search query. So that's a really good workflow. I've been using it for almost all the content that we have on InfraNodus and on Nodus Labs, and it always yielded very good results. One bonus track for those who watch until the end. I want to show you how you can actually compare what people are searching for to what they find. So what you can do is to go back to the apps page and using the same marketing app, you can, uh, if in the step before you studied the, the informational demand, so what people are searching for, now you can study informational supply. So what do people actually find? And if I type in AI and go on Google search, it will import Google search results uh, for this query, AI. It's gonna show me what people actually find on the first 40 results. And then I can also add maybe artificial intelligence, because I use the same search term there, maybe also AI website builder, and let's say AI image generator. So I add all the search queries I used to find out what, what people are searching for. Uh, now I have a graph of what people actually find. And the great thing is that I can compare these two graphs. So this is a really powerful advanced workflow that will yield very good results. So in order to make the comparison, you go here and then you want to choose uh, how this context is different from another one because you don't want to see the intersection. You want to see the difference to the keywords one. Then you click visualize and it will show you what exists. So it says here diff in keywords, but not in Google search results. So what are the combinations of keywords people use when they search for this topic that actually don't exist in the search results for this topic? So. Here, I want to emphasize that these are not the words that people uh, use, right? So, for example, if they search for AI, they will see search results that will contain the word AI, of course. But the reason it's here is because it's showing you the relations that are underserved. So, people do search for AI restrictions, for instance, or they search for AI reviews. Uh, so, you see here, Wix AI website builder review but they don't find it so easily in Google search results. So that means these are the niches that you should target because not only these are the search terms that people use, but these are the search terms that are underserved by the current informational supply. 
And there is this concept of informational gain in search engine optimization that you can read about that uh, talks about the fact that Google favors search results that add something constructive into the existing discourse. And surely it also uses its knowledge of what people are searching for. So if you bridge the gaps between different content that are already exists, but you do it in a way that also caters to the interests of users, you will be most likely pushed to the top of search results. So this is how you also know that whatever it is that you're writing will be shown to the people who are actually interested in the topic. If you focus on the relations between the ideas that they don't easily find yet, right? So this is how you also contribute something new to the discourse with making sure that it still relates to the existing interests. So here we have AI reviews, so reviews of different tools. We also have AI restrictions. So in this case, that would be probably, uh, yeah, image generator with no restrictions. So this is also like another interesting search that people want to have image generators with no restrictions, like they don't really find it so easily. If we focus on other terms, for example, here, artificial, of course, intelligence is not selected because when they search for artificial intelligence, they do find artificial intelligence. But what they don't find is maybe free artificial intelligence image generators. So they need free and with no restrictions. So that can be interesting for us because it makes us understand uh, what kind of image generators people are interested in that they don't really find. And the same we do here with website builders. So we have website, website builder, they find. But for example, what they don't find is something that they can download, like AI web website free download, or maybe an app, a uh, free AI, Wix AI website builder app. So this is something they search for, but they don't see it in search results. It means when you're writing about it, you would want to focus on this topic. So this is how you would approach this workflow, comparing what people search for to what they find, identifying the combinations of words that people use in their search queries that are underserved by search results. And here you can actually see all this in the analytics panel in the blind spots. And if you want to reveal only the words that are used in search queries, but that are not shown in search results, then you can click here. Uh, but most likely almost everything will be served. So it's gonna be really hard to find something here. Like uh, only things like Reddit, for instance, are maybe not shown um, so readily unless you use the word edit, Reddit. So that perhaps is a kind of insight that you would not be interested in. But for example, Android, that's interesting because we see that people are searching for artificial intelligence apps for Android, but maybe that's not something readily available. So that could indicate another potential product or content idea. Uh, and then if you want to go back to the missing relations, you click on the button here and show it again. So this is how you would use it. I hope you find it useful. I use the example of AI research, um, but of course you can also do it for much more complex topics. Uh, for example, if you're researching a certain uh, niche idea, um, if there are people searching for it, you will probably be able to extract the same kind of results. But if you don't have in any information on that because this topic is too niche, then you could just perform the second part of the analysis to at least understand what people are writing about. And then in this case, what you would want to do is to focus on the existing gaps in this content. So you would just um, visualize this uh, existing content and then look at the blind spots, highlight the different clusters and see, for example, that there's a gap between uh, generators of images and machine learning. So kind of more technical stuff and how images are generated. And maybe you could create um, some research on, for example, how machine learning is used to improve image generation. So there you will be focusing on the gaps in the existing content because you don't have enough information on what people are actually searching for. So that would be the approach that you would use for the stuff that uh, you don't have so much data for yet. All right, so I hope you find it useful. Please let me know uh, how it goes uh, with your own content and data. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer. Thank you.